and that's The Wind and the Sea by Mr. Paul Lawrence Dunbar. And ladies and gentlemen, the next piece I'd like to do for you is called Pain. And I wrote this piece. What inspired me to write this piece is after going through that deep love breakup and trying to come to terms. And I believe that in order for us to come to a place of inner peace and contentment, that we do have to, in fact, confront our demons. And so this is pain. Silent is the night when the memories come calling, where hope then becomes a desperate measure of endurance. In the midst of solitary pain and confusion, you struggle with the intrusion of deceased occurrences, occurrences not yet realized, occurrences too old to justify. In the stillness of the night, the tears won't stop. Torment and pain have invaded your spot. No message was received announcing its arrival. You shut your eyes and it appeared without warning. If you open your eyes, it won't stop. Only when you greet it without holding back will it cease to disturb and provoke your conscience. Come sit beside me and we'll chat. Why else have you surfaced into my consciousness? And so ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I would again like to pay tribute to another favorite poet. And I think it's safe to say we all know Mr. John Lennon. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is Let It Be. When I find myself in time of troubles, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she's standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And when the broken-hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. And, and though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. And when the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. Shine until tomorrow, let it be. I wake up to the sound of music. Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. There will be an answer, let it be. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is imagine. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there's no countries. It's very hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for, and no religion to. Imagine all the people live in life in peace. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I am not the only one. I hope someday you will join us and the world will live as one. Yes, the whole wide world will live as one. Imagine no possession. I wonder if you can. No need for greed or hunger, a brotherhood of man. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. You may say I am a dreamer, but I am not the only one. I hope someday you will join us and the whole wide world will live as one. And ladies and gentlemen, at this point of the reading, it's very personal for me and I thank you for allowing me to do this part for you. Today being the 16th of April means that it is my daddy's birthday and if my daddy was alive today, he would be 87 years old. and. Um, my, we are from Jamaica, and my father's business was supplying the hotels, airports, and restaurants along the northern coast of Jamaica with produce and <clears throat> livestock from his properties. There were occasion times when my father and the workmen traveled to other districts to buy produce that weren't harvested on his properties. And in February of 97, while I was having a conversation with my father on the telephone, I said to him that I wanted to write a piece that paid homage to the men, women, and children of Jamaica who toil and labor the land. But I was uncertain of what crops are grown in the district you hear me mention in the poem. And so my father patiently spent three hours on the telephone with me describing what crops are grown in these districts.
because he himself had traveled <coughs> those roads. And so tonight, I would like to dedicate the merchant man to my father, Mr. John L. Wong, and to the men and women and often children who toil and labor the land. <coughs> From the red country of Southfield, where watermelons, cucumbers, and citrus fruits grow, to the potato fields of Manchester, down to the wet banana and coffee fields of Portland, I have traveled these roads, past the green country of Westmoreland, with fields of sugarcane, and the beautiful cattle farms of Woodstock and Kew Park. I have seen many rains, through Black River and Junction, on to the dry country of St. Elizabeth, where an old woman waits to deliver baskets of tomatoes and carrots. The blazing Caribbean sun has beaten upon my back. From the northeastern side of St. Elizabeth, along the rocky roads of Ginger Hill, I stop to collect the harvest of September's pineapple crop. For over 40 years, these sometimes lonesome roads have been my companion, but I will never give them up. My vocation is buying and selling the bounty of the fields. Each time I pass through Seaford, German town as it is known, and hear the sound of the Roman Catholic church bell, I think it tolls for me, an old merchant man whose life is the road. When dusk falls, my eyes grow weary from too little sleep, and from the narrow and winding roads lit only from above. But before I can head home, I must stop in Berkshire, for bags of cocoa and coconuts, baskets of pumpkins and pears, and bushels of corn and gungu peas. Through each district I pass, the children wave their hands, they all know me, and men in roadside rum bars shout out to the traveling merchant man. Then I make my way home, where I rise with the first cock a doodle doo and head for the, swe the sweltering streets of Mobe and Ocho Rios at the receiving room of the tourist resorts is where I deposit my load. And after the sun paints its golden light behind the sea, I make my way to Port Royal. On a boat, I travel 60 miles to Pedro Key, where on about four acres of land, the fishermen from South St. Elizabeth lay out their catch from the sea. And the next piece I'd like to do is also in honor of my father. It's called Sir. I wrote it the very same night we had the conversation in 1997. And I had the opportunity to read it to my father more than a dozen times. And he loved it. And so, Daddy, happy birthday. And I know that you're a part of the wind right now. And I believe that your heart will survive forever in the wind and the sea. And I love you. And I'll be home. On 12th of August to see you. And so this is for my father. It's called Sir. Sir, I know you well. You live inside my soul. Your heart, your mind, and your spirit dwell in every fragment of my being. My dreams, conceived from your passion, fertilized with images of what could be. My passion, derived from your sentimental soul. Oh, what a story to be told. I will always remember the day you cried. You were not ashamed, I was by your side. I can't remember, but forgive me if I didn't reach out and hold your hand. So many times when I was in need, you were there extending your hand. And now that I am grown, I understand. You've made me the woman I am. Thank you, sir, for giving me your soul, for helping to define my goals, for nurturing my love of the land, for teaching me to respect every man. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the close at the reading and the, the second to last piece I would like to do for you is called My Love. I wrote this piece in honor of my higher power and so this is in honor of my belief in my higher power and tonight I would also like to extend it to my friend Dorothy Cunningham who can't be here tonight because she's been prepped for surgery She's the finest friend anyone could want, and she's the very best friend I could ever have. And this piece is called My Love. My love speaks from the heart in a melodious tone that comforts me. In time of fear and confusion, I feel his shadow surrounds me. Never hides in the dark, with radiance he reveals his face to me. 
My love is unpretentious, yet humbly boastful that he dwells in me. My love is refuge from the unrelenting rain seeking to drown me. When fear weather friends pass me by, my love consoles me. When there is less than a crust of bread to share, my love provides for me. Although I have often neglected my love, through all adversities he guides me. Never forsaking my needs, I have found a remedy for restless nights through his serenity. For each day you've tapped me awake, Lord. Thank you for the wonders you've given me. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for listening. And the last piece I would do for you tonight is called For You. And please accept it as my sentiments to all of you. And thank you once again for coming and for listening and for coming out in this wind. <laughs> so this is for you. <clears throat> From this day forward, may your lives be like a song, echoing sweet harmony all day long. May the pulse of your hearts blossom with each beat. May the tempo of your days find you complete. May the rhythm of your passion find you love to keep. May love bloom with the winds of time and chime in a sweet mellow rhyme. May chords of laughter fill the walls of your souls and flourish through the halls of your home. May each note of your lives be sung in bliss, sealed with a tender kiss. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for coming. <laughs>